Excellencies, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, and friends of India, good morning and namaste. I take this opportunity, first of all, to congratulate my fellow countrymen and friends of India on the occasion of our 76th Independence Day. Today, India has completed 75 years of our independence. Sitting in UNESCO, it is my privilege to speak on the occasion of the 150th birth anniversary of Sri Aurobindo, one of the great souls to have walked on this planet. He was not just a freedom fighter, but also a spiritual master. His philosophy of Nar to Narayan has the potential to guide the youth, not just in India, but across the globe to realize greatness. The more our youth learn about Sri Aurobindo, the greater will they learn about themselves. There is a need for the younger generation to read Sri Aurobindo, to internalize the myriad dimensions that he constantly radiates and to contextualize him continuously. Auroville in Pondicherry, India is inspired by his vision. As Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi said, there is a perennial aura to Sri Aurobindo. Each generation, each movement, each crisis or opportunity finds some truth, some direction, some hint from his vast spiritual and intellectual corpus. Sri Aurobindo leads the multidimensional quest for our civilizational roots, national self-reliance. He believed that in order to be truly free, education needs to be reimagined. It would be education that aims to generate a complex and vibrant scientific spirit and aspires to rekindle a deep cultural and spiritual spirit. Sri Aurobindo spoke of perfecting and developing all the dimensions of the learner. He believed in encouraging and nurturing a global outlook and yet be deeply rooted to Adhyatma, the spiritual essence of India. In these thoughts, he embodied the spirit of India, which is traditional yet modern. Sri Aurobindo had begun his public life with the vision of a self-reliant India and the idea of a new education for India. His ideals and vision are being realized today with the policies of the government of India. Sri Aurobindo spoke of the attempt at self-development by self-help as absolutely necessary for our national salvation. In his speeches and writings, Sri Aurobindo spoke of a Swadeshi that encourages Indian labor Indian manufacturing, Indian articles, preferring our own goods by giving them a little stimulus. It is reflected in the Make in India initiative of the Narendra Modi government. As India goes into the Amrit Kal, the period from 75 years to 100 years of independence, a period of deep awakening, it is time for us to reflect our thoughts towards the light of Sri Aurobindo's message. With this, I leave you all with the five dreams of Sri Aurobindo. These were 1. A revolutionary movement which would create a free and united India. 2. The resurgence and liberation of the peoples of Asia and her return to her great role in the progress of human civilization. 3. A world union forming the outer basis of a fairer, brighter and nobler life for all. Four, the spiritual gift of India to the world. Five, a step in evolution which would raise humans to a higher and larger consciousness and begin the solution of the problems that have perplexed and vexed them since they first began to think and to dream of individual perfection and a perfect society. We are therefore delighted to have the statue of Sri Aurobindo in the premises of UNESCO in Paris.
थैंक यू एंड जय हिंद